Oh my god, that worked. Why is the input to default? I'm just going to do default and let it ride then, I guess, because I don't know what's going to... Well, yeah, and <laughs> until it doesn't work at all. It should just be going to the outputs, but I didn't see output as an option here. I think this... Oh, I, we are literally doing it live right now. We're in it. Uh, all right, everybody. Welcome back to the Sooner or Later podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Joey Gavada, and this week we're talking about Last Night in Soho. An aspiring fashion designer is mysteriously able to enter the 1960s when she encounters a dazzling wannabe singer. Uh, however, the glamour is not all it appears to be, and the dreams of the past start to crack and splinter into something far darker. Last Night in Soho was directed by Edgar Wright, with a screenplay by Edgar Wright and Christy Wilson Car Cairns? Cairns? Uh, st with a story by Edgar Wright, cinematography by Chung Hoon Chung. Oh, that's a cool name. Uh, edited by Paul Mach Machless, Machless. Uh, music by Stephen Price. Production companies were Film Four Productions, Perfect World Pictures, Working Title Films, and Complete Fiction Pictures. Distributed by Focus Features in the United States and Universal Pictures internationally. And a release date of September fourth, twenty twenty one, at Venice. Uh, and a runtime of 116 minutes. Last Night in Soho cost $43 million and made back a total of $22.8 $22 million uh, with worldwide box office and a total estimated domestic uh, video sales of $1.2 million. Uh, Last Night in Soho currently holds a 76% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes with 335 view reviews. And a 90% audience score with 500 plus verified ratings. And I'm going to hold off on the critics' consensus until we get into spoilers. So. Ooh. Oh, I got to start the time. Shit. All right. Uh, you know, start giving your 10 minutes, even though the 10 minutes haven't started yet. Uh, what do we Wait, think about so Last Night in Soho? Uh, I was going to say, what other films have I seen by this guy? Edgar right, Wright, right. you've seen the no, Cornetto Driver, trilogy, right, right. Baby Driver. You you've never seen like Shaun of the Dead or anything. No. Nah. What? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've seen all of those. I've seen the trilogy. I've never seen that. That's kind of wild. Like, Scott, Scott, Pilgrim, right? Scott Pilgrim, yeah. Scott Pilgrim too, yeah. Uh, oh, he didn't direct that. End of the world. Uh, no, the this is end. the uh, this is the end. Is what it's called. Oh no no no, the world's end. You're right. Yeah, um, part of that trilogy. Yeah. I think it's the um, weakest one of the trilogy. I think um, Sam, he he didn't bring back any of his old castmates. No, not for this. Castmates. It would have been weird seeing Simon Pegg in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really like it. Like, like how stylistic this is. Like the other movies are like stylistic. They're just like, like, like so kinda. he made a he made a pretty clean break into being more stylistic with Baby Driver though. That baby Baby Driver is yeah. a lot of style, but that's like true. his comedies are not like this or Baby Driver. Like, no. in, not anywhere near it. Um, so this is like these two movies have been huge departures, I would say, for his um directing style. Yeah, um, yeah, it is. Um, though these two movies are way different. Um, uh, it's like yeah, hard yeah, to like, believe that this is an Edgar Wright movie because it doesn't feel right. like it at all. Obviously, Edgar Wright, like I know his movies, but it's not like this would be like the fifth movie I would think of when it came to like, oh, uh, what has Edgar Wright done? Yeah, like, like Charlotte Dead's number one, and then probably Scott Wood yeah, because that's like, like a cult cool following, yeah. Um, Baby Driver, I forgot that he directed that as well. Oh, really? Yeah. I yeah. mean, I love Baby Driver, so I always think of that. Baby Driver's mm -hmm. probably way higher up on my list when I think of Edgar Wright movies. Um, I've seen Shaun of Dead most, and Shaun of Dead, to me, might be like the best like zombie movie ever, even though it's like a parody. Which is I think most people go there, just because they've seen the movie a ton. You know? Yeah. Um, I, think, I, think really I think all, all the movies, movies are pretty really watchable. watchable. Um, I don't know about this one, though. That's what I was gonna say. This might this, be the least rewatchable. I, look, I don't know if Edgar Wright should be doing horror movies. He oh, should have stuck. Shit. He should have stuck to this movie being more of a thriller, less of a horror movie. I think it suffered from him trying to do uh, horror shit in it. 
Like, it just looked tacky. It looked like a B movie. And if that's what he's going for, fucking right on, brother. You did it. Hell yeah. I'm glad you got your artistic vision out there. But it's not what I expected. When I saw this trailer, I was so fucking hyped for this movie. And then watching it this morning, I was like, that did I, I had too high of expectations for this. I should have came in with my yeah, shit way fucking lower. Yeah, I think we hyped it up too much. No, the world, you, you just... no, the world hyped it up. It, I wouldn't say it was just you guys because everybody that I follow who's like movie people loves this movie. And so I was like, oh, okay, so this is going to be like every other Edgar Wright movie I've ever seen. It's going to blow my dick off. And it did not blow my dick off. My dick is firmly placed on bit? my mom's pubis. Yeah, not even a little bit. See, not even your, not even your fucking. Uh, I mean, what's it called? <laughs> certain things that happened in the movie, I was like, "Oh, this is really fucking rad." Like, I like this. This is not how I thought this was gonna go. But then other parts, I'm like, "Okay, this is like weird." Now, now do you like Thomas and Mackenzie? Uh, the whole you cast is right fantastic. Everybody's really good. I don't think anybody plays their part poorly. She does, oh my god, I'm going fucking crazy really well. Yeah, she does. Like, she played, yeah. I'm going fucking, I'm, I'm bloody mental in it really well. <laughs> it was really good. Um, I mean, she's a good actress. She's been good even like when she's in shitty movies. Because I liked her in um, the fucking Shyamalan old. movie. Yeah. Old's, yeah, I also liked old's her in that. good though. That, oh, movie's, it's that movie's a wild fucking ride. It's a wild ride, yeah, I'll give you that. That's what makes it good, uh, though. It's in, it's it's yeah. enjoyable for one watch and one watch only. Well, see, that's how I feel about this movie. I enjoyed it more so the first time. I really loved this movie the first time I watched it. Yeah, same here. You guys saw it in hey, theaters, like- though, right? Correct. That's yeah. why. I think this was a theater-going experience. I think seeing it at home is like... It's not a very good watching it at home movie. There were multiple parts when I wanted so badly to look at my phone. And I was like, just don't do it. But then the baby would start crying and I was like, I got a reason to do nothing. Do something other than watch this movie (laughs) and play with the baby. baby. Yeah. But But it's not a bad movie. Go ahead. No, no, no. I just think like, because some of the scenes I like the best, like that's in the trailer, like the, like the changing scene or whatever, the, when they're dancing or whatever. Um, and that scene is cool. I like the way it looks when they're like, you know, switching or whatever dance choreography, but I thought it looked so much better in theaters. Like, I don't know why, but watching it back on TV, I was like, oh, this is not as cool as I remember the first time. I mean, I wasn't even desensitized to it from having seen it before. I just thought, oh, that's cool camera work. But like, even that, I was like, this did not blow my dick off. I've seen it. I feel like I've seen it before. Like yeah. Texas Switches or whatever it's called like that. Like mm-hmm. it's definitely nothing new. And it's not like they're not hiding the cuts. Um No, and they're yeah. a lot harder, like rewatching where I knew they were coming versus the first time where you're kind of just trying to watch the movie. But it's like it I thought they were smoother the first time I watched it. Yeah, I I thought I thought they were smooth ish, but I yeah, like I, it must have been just something about being at the movies and seeing it on the big screen that must have made it mm-hmm. look really good. Um, but yeah. like I was watching it on a 4K TV, watching it on yeah. HBO Max. I mean, the home going experience is so good now that it's like I'm sure you would have felt relatively the same. I think so seen. too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not like you were watching it on your phone and been like, no. Oh yeah, it's on my phone different. on 3G connectivity. <laughs> yeah. Like no. Um, it's it's outside. buffering every second. Yeah. Outside. <laughs> yeah. Away from store. your router. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got my phone. Powers going in and out. <laughs> got my phone wrapped in uh, aluminum foil watching this film. Uh, your iPhone 3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just. My issue largely with this movie is that I didn't come into it with an open enough mind. I thought that mm-hmm. this movie should have been an 11, and I should have been prepared for the movie to potentially be a 7 or a 5. Potentially. It's a vibe. Like, if you're yeah. digging the vibe, mm-hmm. it's really good. And I think on the first watch, I was feeling the vibe. And I think, like, not knowing what happens the first time, I thought it was like, oh, okay, I like this. Oh, wow, that's interesting. But it's not like this is a rewatch where I felt like, oh, man, I missed so many things. I feel like I didn't. I feel like I don't I think so either. Know. What about you, Eric? You got two minutes and 56 seconds. Let's hear something. I'll be honest. I kind of forgot the, the ending again uh, that's it's awesome been, it's been so long yeah that is nice i didn't <laughs> but i i did because like 
I knew something was going to happen, but then I was like, is it this guy or is it this guy? I couldn't remember, but I still like the the cuts, like especially that first like when she had the red dress on, like going in between um not Ana de Armas, what's her name? Dude, I kept going Ana de Armas Anya the Taylor whole time. Joy. The whole time I was Anna watching Taylor it, I was Joy. like, "What's Ana doing over there?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was there with you. The cuts between Anya and Thomas and Mackenzie, dude, I thought I thought they were so good. Like even at home. No, yeah, it's, I like I the mirror them. stuff. It's, the mirror, the stuff, mirror stuff was real dope. I like that yeah. a little bit more than I did the the switching off back and forth during the mm-hmm. dance. But like. Oh, go go ahead. I'm, I want you to keep talking, Eric. Because I, I just I just like that bit, and then I like the all the mirror stuff was cool. Her um, I thought her seeing stuff. I thought that stuff was cool, like all her visions she was having. That might be spoil. Uh, like, that might be spoilers. Trip, I don't know if that was in out. the trailer, but I like no. that stuff too. I mean, it happens early on though. I mean, they talk about it. They do, but yeah. like if you don't know that bitch is gonna be in here seeing visions. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I didn't know. I had I no idea. So I came into it and I was like, "Oh, she a motherfucking psychic, psychic? Are we doing yeah. psychic shit?" I thought it was like uh, Midnight uh, in Paris, the Owen Wilson movie, where he just goes back in time. <laughs> Have you never seen that movie, Eric? No, I it don't is, know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's this movie, except not a horror movie. It's like a dramedy, and it's so much fucking better than this movie. I wouldn't even call this a horror movie, though. No, it's a horror movie. There's horror elements. There's horrific shit happening to people. Like, it's a horror the, movie. The, it's a, the last 30 minutes is more horror. Well, yeah. that's when it shows its full breath mm-hmm. of horror. But, I mean, yeah. uh, we've already spoiled it. People seeing visions and shit is scary. She was seeing motherfuckers mm-hmm. without faces and shit. That should have been scary. Whether or not Edgar Wright was able to... Um, stick that landing and make it scary is totally something else because that's it, another thing i like better the first time watching it the scary faces like the, like yeah. the blurred out faces just the concept and everything yeah i mean uh, i think that i think it is a cool concept regardless though i think and you mm-hmm. know we can get into it once it's we a get cool into spoilers. idea like yeah. his ideas in his movie are really good is that it's not the it's the execution he's not over, a horror like, director though yeah yeah he's he is a fun this is his, first, his first time right you could argue that sh- that the cornetto trilogy is a horror trilogy but it's more mm-hmm. comedy horror in the vein of like an evil dead 2 so to Correct. have this movie yeah. be like a horror drama mystery thriller is is a little bit different. Oh shit, that was the timer. Oh no. Um I, I got to turn that noise off. Um okay, so now we're in full spoilers. Anybody who is watching the spoiler free review, go ahead and click into the spoiler review so that just you can mute hear my shit when uh, when I when I say <laughs> no, 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 fuck it. Um, <laughs> that would be funny. Put a box over his face. Just uh click into the spoiler review so that you can see our full deep in deep Deep feelings our about last night in Soho. Our eight minutes spoiler free, <laughs> and then the last two minutes spoilers. Um, but um, yeah, he just—I don't know that he knows how to direct horror movies that are horrific. Like James Wan with this would have been pretty fucking rad. You know what I mean? Like or Lee Winnell using this as like a, a horror movie, it would have been dope. Jordan Peele with this as a horror movie would have been fucking like you're saying, awesome. Like, horrific, like, like as in like. They would have shown us like the faces differently and like how they it, yeah. came out of the walls differently it or some just shit. It would have been scarier, you know. Well, my thing though, I feel like he went too away from comedy. He like was like, okay, everything else he has yeah. has comedic elements, right? This movie doesn't. Like, but he didn't have to do that. Like, let this movie have comedic elements. Let do your uh, thing. But unless this was the story he wanted to tell, because and he, it, it may be the case. He wrote it. Did the story for it, direct it, produced it. Like this is the movie Edited he wanted it. to make. He, I mean, he probably was in the fucking editing bay, changing shit. But like this what is studio is it by? Uh, film for productions, perfect world productions, working title films, and complete fiction pictures. Okay, so he had full control. <laughs> like it's not well, like yeah, it was if, some. If he's producing, his production companies are gonna work on it. Um, yeah. But like, yeah, they're just distributed by Universal, but they didn't actually or, you know, yeah, but they didn't. It's not like I was like, oh, it was this was done by Sony and Sony was like, hey, no, no, no I'm no. not liking that. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, no, no. He had full control over it, which means that he just wanted to do the movie like this, which is cool. But I think, you know, there's a reason this didn't make its fucking money back. Yeah. I don't know how many, like, you know, film buffs who fucking love Edgar Wright were jizzing over it. But like. 
This is not a or maybe movie people for normal like, people. Oh, it's in the seventies. Fuck that. No, <laughs> people like London in the sixties and shit like that. Like, I don't know. I don't know that that would have turned too many people off. And they were like, "Oh, she talks weird. I don't like that shit." Yeah, oh, like it's Tuesday in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, when, did, when was the release date you said? Again? 20, 2021, I'm sorry. What's 20 I mean, nut tea? 20 nut we, tea. I'm pretty sure around that time, though, like, it's theaters were kind of not really open, open again. No, like, they, like, opened and closed. It was opening up. At that point, you were you were getting vaxxed and shit. You, it was definitely yeah. opening up. Like, no, no, no. I wonder how other movies did around that time, though. Better than this. Uh, I could tell you that. October. 20. And I probably Edgar Wright. They're like Edgar who? Yeah, Edgar what? You're talking about that guy that made that cuck movie, <laughs> Scott Pilgrim versus oh, the Bulls. Oh wait, it has Anna de Armas in it. Yeah, I love Anna de Armas. She speaks fluent Spanish. Um, I mean, and I think the the home market performance kind of really dictates that it didn't like people really don't love this movie. Which is cool. Like, you know, directors are going to falter every once in a while and they're going to try something different and it's not going to work. Um, this might have come out the same week as Dune. And Dune was a uh, fucking uh, uh, banger. So <laughs> the yeah, movies like, were yeah. back when Dune was out. So, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, but true. to release against Dune, though, that's a major, like, they, they probably should And have horror released. movies have well, huge yeah. drop off second week, they which do. just fucking drops off the map. I mean, but yeah. I don't know if this movie could have come out at any other time and done any better. I don't think so. Because then it, you would have put it in uh, the the fall with other Halloween movies, and this movie wasn't going to do as well because it's not as scary. So Yeah, so like the, the 29th that like Friday came out, uh, Dune made $4 million, Halloween Kills made $2 million, No Time to Die made $2 million, Venom Let There Be Carnage made $1.5 million. I think My Hero Academia made two point eight. All of Antlers those movies, all of those movies except for Antlers, were I think box office successes. Yeah. So it and is. This was at seven. This is literally just this movie. Nobody wanted it. Yeah. You know, it but if you look at even horror, though, it had to compete with like Antlers and Halloween uh, Kills. Like, I mean, it, this is I the think... better of those three movies, though. Or, yeah, because Halloween so Kills is dog shit, and Antlers is dog shit. Yeah. yeah. But like, I, I mean, like you said, the where else would you put it? At what time would you? Dude, put you could Edgar Wright uh, shoulders didn't show up, man. No, that is, um, or maybe there's just not as many Edgar Wright dick writers out there, you uh, know? Yeah, maybe not. Maybe you're the only one, dude. No, I'm not the only one. Trust me, my Twitter feed is full of those fucking cocksuckers. It's just that <laughs> all seven of us weren't enough. Shit, um, the French Dispatch even made a million dollars that day. Like. There yeah, was a lot of movies out. Like there were, it, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. film, the cinema was back. So this, yeah, this movie's this was after Carnage did like like well, and then other people were like, all right, we can tweeze them in like yeah. at the end of the year. Um, but yeah, and then they made they're the reason of uh, Maverick. You know, I mean, yeah, uh, true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the fucking Sony exec. <laughs> they couldn't help last night in Soho, but they helped Maverick. Look, Maverick was more important. That one was a cornerstone in uh in film. Uh, but the critics' consensus is that although it struggles to maintain its thrilling early momentum, Last Night in Soho shows flashes of Edgar Wright at his most stylish and ambitious. And the audience says, Last Night in Solo has visual thrills, a great soundtrack, and a plot that keeps you guessing. In other words, everything you want from an Edgar Wright movie. Yeah. Except it doesn't have his soul. Like, it doesn't feel like an Edgar Wright movie, which is, I think, the thing that's killing me, you know? I think it's I a solid it first time watch, but like after that, it, I don't, it doesn't have enough to keep you coming back. And even then, I, yeah, I don't know. Like, Shaun of the Dead, I could rewatch. I'm not big on Baby Driver, but I could rewatch that shit. Like, Baby Driver like, is Dead, extremely seen- rewatchable. Because yeah, I love Baby it's Driver. It's all it's all thrill, you know. Like it's all the the whipping and and oh my god, is he gonna shoot him? Yeah, I think this movie would suffer from you not knowing, or you already knowing the twist. So and you think you think he needed more humor for it to be no, an no, Edgar no, no, Wright no, no, no. movie, or what I, is? I, I, I don't know what's Edgar Wright's soul. Like what's what's his thing? It's it's hard to pinpoint, right? But I said, I, I've only seen Baby Driver and I guess Scott Pilgrim. Um, but but it's like it's but comedy comedy wouldn't have done it here 
Like there's there's stylistic choices that I think he made different choices that if he made ones that were more akin to his past movies, it would have been different. And maybe those choices that he did make in those movies are more comedy focused. So, you know, it would have been fucking impossible to do anyways, because you can't you can't add comedy into this. It would have been weird unless it's like dark yeah. comedy. But like then if you add comedy in this movie, you're reducing the uh, the building stress of her having her breakdown right and then her discovering we're in spoilers her discovering that the old woman is sandy and that sandy didn't die she did all the killing and she was mur- mass murdering dudes and hiding them in the walls Jeez. and shit she was a baddie dude um yeah but like she any comedy would have made this movie feel fucking weird See, but all his other movies, I care more so about the supporting cast as well. Outside of, like, Thomason and Anya Taylor-Joy, like, I didn't really care about any of the other characters. You care about Anya Taylor-Joy's character? I mean, it not as not, not like a lot. Like that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like I mean, I care it's... only in the slightest. I care about her like I cared about Matt Smith. Like if they were in the movie, like, I don't more... care about him at all. Oh really? I liked his character. Yeah. I was like, oh, this I think is he's cool. a good actor. Oh, I, he's fantastic. He blows this part yeah. away. But I, but he was better in the, in this or Morbius. Uh, Venom? No, he was in Morbius. Morbius. Yeah. Come on. Oh, he, more... oh, yeah. right. he was all Morbin time or whatever. No, nah, man, he was yeah. cooler in, in Morbius. Yeah, man. he was a fucking vampire. In Morbius yeah. but yeah like I, I agree I think that is part of Edgar Wright's style is his supporting characters are second to none like yeah. he makes a world feel fully realized and I think the reason that this movie kind of hurt a little bit is because it's based in London in modern times and like even though Shaun of the Dead was that way I, I think Shaun of the Dead is in like a fictional British town isn't it it's or like more it, small, town, London. small town pubby type right. feeling, right? And, and he did well, world like you building care about, there. And in Shaun of the Dead, you care about like the girlfriend, you care about the best friend, you yeah. care about the mom, like you know everyone. everyone that everyone that has little parts you care about, like and it, it's like more realistic, relatable characters. And, and this baby driver, not. you care about the whole crew, like even every the single ones character. that you hate, yeah. Yeah, even you know, like Jamie Fox and shit. Like you're even like Kevin oh. Spacey's character. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, you do though. You totally care about Kevin Spacey. Yeah. You care about a He's piece an interesting of shit. character. Yeah, but like this movie has none of that. None of it. I like, think they needed more Diana Rigg, dude. I mean, she I loved... she was a baddie in the end yeah. when she's like explaining everything. I loved her. Stone man. Cold and I... shit. Yeah. The end in the twist, and then especially too when they bring the music in again, like it's it's good, like it's really good. Yeah, it just this movie's slow, and this movie is really boring. Yo, at points. holy dick, is this movie slow? It is. I was like, this is the longest two hours of my fucking life, <laughs> and, and it's so weird to contrast that to Nope, where it was a fast two hours. Like yeah. that movie was banging. Like in this movie was a crawl, which was cool because it it crawled to a crescendo that was. That was a banger ass ending, but like it could have been a little faster than it was. And with the roommate, it's like such a like stereotypical mean girl. Like like we wasted too much time on her. Yeah, like, oh, I have her character. And <laughs> even when you do the library thing with like, oh, she almost stabbed me or whatever, I'm like, shut up! Like, dude, then just that like didn't so even stupid. that didn't even get resolved. It didn't. Yeah, it didn't impact her. anything. Yeah, it didn't impact shit. And yeah, then, it was just a waste of time. And then the. What's the dude's name that she was hanging out with? Uh, I'm looking for his name. Mike or John? Was his name John? Is it? He doesn't even have a picture on his shit. I think it was John. Um, yes, it is. Like he was cool, man. Why couldn't we have spent I, I more like time more with that character? Him. Yeah, like why couldn't we have shown like the whole movie was just kind of her breaking down instead of her bouncing between manic episode and you know a mm-hmm. sense of safeness with other people, right? And like, like let them have more of a relationship. Let them you right. know actually you know have this back and forth because like it's just like okay, and it's like uh, you. It's, it's it kind of rushes things like and that's my yeah. issue with it like there has some pacing issues like the first like once it gets to like an hour it's like okay she's now seen sandy and we're gonna go fully through with this but the first hour doesn't really set it up enough i feel it's kind of like oh okay it's almost like a different story and you don't know it's just like oh it's like oh she's kind of going crazy yeah and then i'm like i i guess she is but she isn't i don't freaking know 
They they should have just started her in London, already at the school. Yeah, having a shitty time. Like what? <laughs> like other than the grandmother going, you know, you a crazy bitch. Like what did her? Have you her seen do? your mother lately? Have you been? Have you been seeing her, mate? Like fucking. I haven't seen her in weeks, mom. I, I bet- that doesn't. That doesn't add much like her seeing her mom in the mirror early on. Dude, it doesn't add much at the end either. They should have kept it a secret. Yeah. They should have kept her seeing shit a secret until the until she actually <laughs> sees shit. Yeah. Yeah, they shouldn't have said nothing. Know, the whole time you're like, oh, she's dreaming. That's cool. She's dreaming. Oh, she's yeah. 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 Well, so that's the weird thing too, right? So are they saying that she can interact with the past and that... like, And like, if that's the case, is she being sexually assaulted? Is she having to live through that? Like, what the fuck is happening? This movie has a bunch of unexplained plot points that I don't <laughs> yeah, understand. I never it. thought about that one. Like, uh, that was the first thing I thought. Does she get hurt? <laughs> she, like, busts her hand through a mirror. She if she had gotten got in real life. That's what I said. And then there was no <laughs> the cut. The only time she gets it is the, it's the hickey. It's the only time it happens. That, like... It's, it's, Freddy Krueger was feeling a little, uh, a little handsy that day. Yeah. <laughs> it just seems like, you know, he had ideas and then decided uh oh, we're not gonna go with them but like you want to flesh that out and then afterwards i'm sure maybe there's like more to it like there's a like more you know they made they had to cut stuff obviously in yeah movies. and i'm like but it's like why have that scene and then like and then she's like freaking out because those guys are like you know those ghosts are like climbing on her or whatever yeah but then it's just like are they aren't they are you like like it's weird yeah I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm not gonna lie. That got me though. When like she went to go, like go for her alarm. She's like, "Oh, it's over." Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the dude reaches. Oh yeah, yeah. They were, mean, that the got me. That's still a lot of cool moments. Like it's yeah. not like the I hate the movie. It's just it has flaws. Right. It, um. But yeah, that was that was crazy. Um. I mean, the faces stuff when you start seeing the people and then she starts seeing them is cool. I do like it. And then like it's like it's like morphing together like her reality. And but yeah. it's like I don't understand it though. Like, yeah. is she just psychotic? Can she actually speak to the dead? Like, is she actually seeing her mother like spirit, or is it like it can't be her imagination because of the hickey thing? So then I'm like, no, I, I, I don't, don't know. I don't think so. I think she is a psychic because her mom was apparently like that, and then she yeah. ends up seeing old girl in the mirror too. That or she's just psycho. She's just yeah, crazy. I don't really get the- and I don't really get that ending, to be honest. I think it's just supposed to be like, you know, oh, your mom's here. You saved here. me type shit? Or no, 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 like... no, no, no. No, I thought it was a malicious smile is what she gave her. I also thought it was malicious, too. Yeah. But it's like, what? I think it's like I'm still here. Like, right. you didn't get rid of me type of thing. Yeah. And I'm a, but like, I'll bloody cut you, bitch. You but like, why C-word? would the, the lady have such a, like, evil demeanor to her? You're like, you're, like, 75 years old. Like, and she's not a dude. Nothing happened. Yeah, like, I, I don't know. Yeah. Like, she was killing dudes. Why are you fucking being mean to this girl? I don't yeah, understand. Yeah, what did Anya do? Nothing. All she did was, was... have that old boy in there. And then that scene was weird, too, where old boy, and then she, like, freaks out and stuff. And just, You know like... what? He's either down bad or a fucking real G for coming back. It's one of the yeah. two. Yeah. Cause he's down bad he's, for sure. No, I mean, she a baddie. I don't think he's down bad. He's not. Once she got that blonde hair, he didn't stand a goddamn chance. No, he wasn't a bad looking <laughs> dude though. Like he can't be that down bad. Um, I mean, dude, he's a he's a fashion dude too. So he probably she's not down bad. No, no way. He was just a good yeah. dude. And then she, he was like. He's like, oi, bravo, I'm not trying to get caught for the R word. And then she was like screaming. And then he was like, ah, f- I got to get the fuck out of here. I'm going to walk through glass to get the fuck out of here. This. But she's like also the only nice girl. Like every other like yeah. girl in here is a shitty person. Except for like the bartender lady. Like every other female in here is kind of. And even the bartender like, lady is kind of a dick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah kind of like a it's dick. like everyone. But like even with the grandmother, it's like, dude, we got nothing out of that relationship. I feel no. The relationships are the weakest part of this movie. Yeah, she looks familiar too, the grandmother, but I don't know what I've seen her. Oh, I have no idea. Um, I think the soundtrack's the best part of this movie, though. Hundred percent. I don't yeah. even think it's up for debate. This, dude, I was jamming, man. The soundtrack bops. Yeah. I, the twist though with the with the older gentleman who was like stalking her or whatever. I think that twist was fucking stellar, and then it was followed by the I didn't twist. See that shit coming. Me either. And then it was. I, yeah. I think the the twist of the old lady being Sandy was a little easier to guess. 
you know? Uh, Alex guessed it right away. And then, you know, the further the movie went on, I was like, damn, maybe she didn't die. Like, maybe this is her. But then the the second twist where she was the killer, that one also was like, oh, fuck, I didn't see this shit coming. <laughs> I, do, I think the ending's good, though. Like, I think the ending saves the movie because I think yeah. all the twists are good. Like, I didn't see any of them coming. Maybe, and maybe I should have. I mean, rewatching, I can tell. But I the mean, first time watching... They, they definitely... When they introduced Sandy in her dream, like the very first dream, she's like, I'm Alex. Well, yeah, that and then, was the like, weird part, too. Yeah. It, fast is like loud as hell. And then, like, I can't remember if the old lady, um, Diana, introduces herself as Alex when she rents out the place. I don't think she, or she does. she just says, I'm Miss Campbell. Yeah, I don't know that she gives think, her first probably, name. Yeah, I think she just says her. Because the first time she name. notices it, the first time, um, uh, oh my God, what the hell is her name? Ellie? Yeah, the first time Ellie notices it is when she's looking at the mail. Yeah. And even though she didn't even notice it, she glossed over it. Uh, the audience will didn't. Like, I guess if Don just paid attention, but mm. she just, she was only worried about her, like, Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was just looking for the mail. piece of mail or whatever. You're right, you're right. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, this movie could have been amazing. Mm-hmm. And instead, I mean, the middle of this movie good. is weak as shit. Like, yeah, I, the second I, act really fucking no. I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the it's almost like the the back half of the first and the first half of the second is trash. Mm-hmm. Like that yeah. whole forty five minutes or whatever is do do, and then it picks up and it yeah. gets better. But a, a third of this movie, if reworked, this movie could have been great. Yeah, yeah, and maybe it did. Maybe it just took someone rereading the script and being like. Oh, Edgar, are you sure about this one? And he would have been like, yeah, like, probably not. <laughs> you know what would have been cooler? Just, Go ahead. I would say, and everyone just shitting on Ellie. Like, even the cops shit on, shitted on Ellie. <laughs> yeah, she just had a tough Wait, break she's of She's fucking mental, baby. And he's like washing his hands. <laughs> but what would have been cooler is if she starts in London, and then she talks to her grandmother, but, like, we never see her grandmother. So then we're like, is she actually talking to her grandmother because she's getting so crazy? I think that oh, would shit. be cooler. And midterms are coming up, so she's fucking studying late nights in the library <laughs> alone. <laughs> Why are you fucking whispering <laughs> at me, John? It's a fucking library. <laughs> it's a library, bro. <laughs> that joke fucking nailed me, man. That shit put me <laughs> to sleep. I was dying. It was so, so funny. He was like, I can keep you up. Yeah. He's like, oh, what am I saying? Well, they were on ecstasy hard as fuck. They were rolling yeah, they were hits. It was so I, funny. I love yeah, the line though when it's like, you know, uh, oh, the least I can do for you. And it's like, oh, what's the most? I don't know why, but it cracked me. I loved it. Yeah. I was like, that's smooth. And then she says it later on. And then she's like, oh, I, I don't know why I said that. Dude's all like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was cool. Their chemistry was really good. We just didn't get enough of it. Yeah. Like take out the the mean girls like or have them have like the the roommate got yeah, too much screen Jocasta. time for what she did. Yeah, like she didn't do Jocasta. shit, but like shit on her. Like, yeah. but also too, she goes from like the Ellie goes from like okay, but not really, I guess, because she's seen her mom in the beginning. She's, but it's like kind of it's fucked. so quick. Yeah, like, she's so, she's like thirty percent fucked already. <laughs> they make fun of her like one time behind her back, and she's like, I gotta move out. Like, like literally that's like day number two right but that's like that's like a whole thing with yeah. par- it's paranoid schizophrenia she's seeing yeah. shit and hearing voices yeah the minute somebody does her wrong she's gonna be like i can't these people are out to yeah. get me i gotta fucking go you know what i mean like so if we're looking at it through the lens of she is just actually fucking crazy uh, like she's just <laughs> mentally ill it makes sense like she's doing but things think- that a mentally ill person would be doing which is true but then i also think it's like paranormal because like Oh, oh she no, was looking at that board. I, I don't but, anybody who looks at this movie and is like, no, it's all just mental illness. Bitch, yeah. what are the what the fuck are you talking about? This bitch is seeing ghosts yeah. and shit. No, no, no. It's way past mental illness at this point. But I, yeah, on the outside looking in, you're supposed to be like, oh, this is like a, in reference to schizophrenia, sure. Yeah. Um, but like the thing where it's like, oh, the car just happened to be the one on the floor of the the house even though there's other housing shit on there that like drew her to that apartment it's like it's some sixth sense shit going on oh i like that maybe it's like the ghosts yeah, of the dead like men that, yeah. who like led her there that'd be kind of cool because because like it's it's just too it's too convenient for like oh i need a house oh wait this one on the floor oh it's a house like 
Yeah, but it's not even really, really like she needed a house. Like she you know, did she it, just though. didn't. She just wanted her house. Just, if, if no houses were there, she could have went back to her room. Yeah, like the room was still there. She still had it. She just said she's still renting that bitch out. Yeah, she's definitely paying for that shit. Her student loans are still getting racked up for it. Dude, all her extra money is on that fucking. Now she has to work because all her extra money's for rent. No, she's wearing her extra money, dog. She was that was like three months yeah. worth of rent. Yeah. She bought for that jacket. That shit was like seven hundred pesos. Yeah, whatever. Like fucking ten thousand <laughs> Japanese yen. She had to pay for that. Um. Yeah. Damn. I really do wish that I like this movie more though. It makes me so sad because this. I feel like all we doing is shit on it though, for the most part. I, I mean, kind of did figure like it would be heartbreaking watch for you. Yeah. Cause, uh, I was like, man, I hope he enjoys it, but I almost wish it was yeah. more stylistic too. Like if he would have gone full fucking Zack Snyder style, like just style over substance, fine, give me that. Cause I, cause I know what I'm watching. Then I'll fucking turn my brain off. It's the cell. The cell is was all style over substance. Yeah. Fine, give me that shit. Cause I love that, but not this where it's a little bit I, of style and a little bit of substance. Mm. No, fuck that. I think what helped me though the first time, especially I didn't see the trailer too much. So oh, like I had see, no- yeah, you're lucky. I had no idea what this movie was about. I thought these two girls were like, I'm like, is this taking, is, is Ellie in that time? Like, I didn't realize, I didn't know it was modern day. That's what 60s. I thought too, though, is that she's like traveled back in time or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when I figured out, I was like, oh shit, she's like, did some dream shit. Okay. Like, awesome. I was like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't see that shit. <laughs> some Freddy she's shit. dream walking. Yeah. She's a dream warrior. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she's a warrior. I don't know. I, I think we said the good things about it though. Yeah, I mean it's a good looking movie. It's a very oh yeah, good visually cool movie. shit. Yeah. I mean honestly, the mirror stuff I think is so good, and then like the fogginess of the ghost stuff I think is super cool. The ghosts do like, look good. Um, yeah, I don't. I like how they're like 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 oh, like you can see a lot of them, but you can't see like too much of them. It doesn't like it. It feels like a nice in between. Which like it doesn't look clearly like a ghost because you can see enough features, right? But then it's like it's like I don't know, it's like it's like fog almost, which I like. Yeah, yeah. And then it, I like how it, like I mean, um, Sandy even explains it right. She's like, I like it. There are so many men. I just had to like blur out their faces at one point to like mm-hmm. you know I can become sane. Which is cool. So though. that's I I really yeah. like that. I yeah I don't know. But I d- mm. I did think it was kind of lame when the ghosts were like help. No, Help. <laughs> which is yeah. I almost wish that they would have kind of. I thought it was a little cheesy. If they would have like uh, laid the breadcrumbs for that earlier on in the movie, I think it would have been less of a cheese ball moment. You know what I mean? Like if the ghosts were trying to talk to her, but she wouldn't listen, it would have been different. Mm-hmm. But like just but, randomly being like, "Help me!" I can understand how that's kind of cheesy. But that was another time when it's like, like because she it's the hickey, and I guess that time where it's like so she can interact like well but the ghosts are even different than when she went back in time or whatever yeah because they're kind of sneaking in but it's like I, her psyche's almost breaking more so maybe that's why they yeah. have to seep in more because she has it's it less together more fucked. <laughs> yeah that yeah. could be it too because now it's bleeding into her awake right versus it's only doing when she's sleeping yeah um, yeah which is interesting i thought it was which, cool i, I mean you can say sense. like she's not getting sleep so she's like kind of dozing off you know yeah, but I think we're giving this movie a lot. <laughs> like we're really <laughs> filling in the holes for this movie. But you have to. I think you have to fill in the holes for this movie. Yeah, you like, do. Otherwise, it would drive me crazy. There's plot holes. Yeah, like, a ton of all over the fucking place. Yeah. And the hickey, it was just a snail, dude. A snail came out of nowhere. <laughs> you know what she did? You know that first day, like she did have for a little more curls in her hair when she was running late. So maybe she, she the next herself? day she straightened it and burnt herself. Yeah. It would have been the other way around. You burn yourself with a curling iron. You know, I'm I'm trying to fix it, you know. I'm giving it my best shot. This is a first draft, all right? No, yeah, on. you're right. Second draft, though, we have to switch them because you can't yeah. burn yourself with a straightener. Yeah. Um, straightener, straight, no, oh, straightener. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's the rod. Right. Thread. The yeah, the curling yeah. iron is just an exposed heating element yeah, yeah. that these motherfuckers yeah. put in their ha- hair crazy style. Yeah. <laughs> she, she got some 60s shit. We don't know the way they were in the 60s. She might have some... Everything's open. Yeah, they actually put gasoline in her shit and set it on fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to curl it with the heat. Um, 
All That's right, another man. good joke. I I like the um when the old lady was like, "It's London, man. Uh, everyone's died here." Yeah, yeah. Which was a good cover Everyone. too. Like that's an excellent cover for her to be like, well, I mean, oh, uh, yeah. everybody's died everywhere, but like, uh, yeah, that was real smart. And then I didn't catch the first time she was like, oh, there's an Italian bistro, so it smells like shit. No, it's it's a it's a cafe from Paris. That's why it smells like shit. I thought, or she was talking she about when it, it gets hot. What did they need to plug in? She said when it gets hot. F- uh, maybe a fan. Yeah, because she's like, oh. No, you don't need it now, but something about the smell, so you might want to keep it plugged in or something. Cafe, Cafe Paris was like the original club that they went to, but she was saying, oh, the loft is next to this Italian bistro, so it smells like shit, so, you know. Oh, she said that, Italian? You... I thought she said a, a, a Paris Cafe. That's what I thought she said. I totally she said bistro. I know, I know for sure she said bistro, and she's like, oh. if you, anything smells funny, it's because there's a bistro next door. Oh. Huh. So, wait, those people were actually in the floors? Yeah, they were in the walls and yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Which is cool, but like that's also cool, like, yeah. that's people why that's why people were leaving. Leaving. They were probably just dying when they found out that there's people in the fucking walls. I mean anytime she found out she clearly kills the people. Yeah, she's just yeah, fucking murdering them. Love. <laughs> yeah, you won't be talking all right. <laughs> she did some real get that. out shit right there. That scene is really remiss of <laughs> get out. Yeah. Bro, she's like, Oh, I know you're not gonna say anything. Yeah, I'm not gonna say anything. Oh, I know. Oh no, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, well, what the fuck? What do you mean? You know. <laughs> oh, boys, a fool though, and got shanked up though. Like I, I thought it was funny. But I would have like... done the same though. I think he acted rationally in the situation. Who would have thought that that old white lady was gonna stab him? Not me. Not me. <laughs> I mean, I would have never went back to the house the way she reacted the first time. Where she doesn't she tell him like, if you come back, I'll kill you. Uh, I think the okay. old lady was like, no, I thought she was just like, if you come back, I'll I'll fucking have you arrested or some shit. Okay. I don't know if she never threatened to back. kill him. Well, but he was outside. And then yeah. it was when old girl took too long. He was like, uh, this seems like a problem. I mean, yeah. she did say 15 minutes hard out. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't wrong. I'm not saying no, he was no, no, wrong no. at all. I think he was. It's not like uh, in a horror movie where a character makes a dumb decision. I think he made the right decision. I'm yeah. just saying, I would have never went back to that goddamn house. I would have went and back you with know, my he own got knife. The strap, dude, it's it's London, man. Yeah, dude, and I would have left everything there. Like, fuck that shit. I don't need none of it. What are records, James? Come on. Yeah, those are her nan's records, dude. Her nan's got like three years tops left, dude. Fuck the records. No way. She was uh, she wasn't that old. Come on. She, I mean, yeah, she was vibrant. Yeah, she was. She was spry. She Not was using, even that vibrant. She no, she was using her cell phone and shit. Like she knew what was up. Granny was yeah. slanging and banging, dude. You better fucking watch your mouth. I, I wonder if Granny sees ghosts. <laughs> right? That's kind of weird that like Nan doesn't see ghosts, but the mom and she does. Like, what is? We don't it? see the grandfather, right? No. Maybe it's from the the that side. Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> She yeah. the old Nan was in uh, Taste of Honey in 1961. That's hot. The Leather Boys, The Knack, and How to Get It. Oh well, God, Doctor Doctor Those Zivago. all sound sexual. Doctor Zhivago is the real time. one. Smashing time. It's smashing time. She won time. the Cannes Film Festival Award for Best Actress and Most Promising Newcomer. So I'm good to just move on the to the next part of the podcast then, right, Eric, since you're <laughs> yeah, reading about this no-name no actor? Name, but, yeah. <laughs> she's not no-name. She's just famous. Oh, my God. She looks creepy as hell in this photo, dude. Oh, no. I'm not the crop it, so it's even creepier. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, my God. No. All right, James, what was your favorite part of the our last night in Soho? Uh, So the music, first of all, favorite stuff fantastic what'd you post it? um but then post the uh the mirror scenes i think are really cool so like when you first like when she first goes into the 60s stuff i like the best yeah uh eric what was your favorite part i think my favorite part was the cop twist yeah when he's like walking away and you're like oh Ooh, man she's recording his conversation like she's about to bust him <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, even though that is kind of weird too, because she's just like stalking him and he's like, What? Like, no, dude, I told you everything. I don't need to be questioned. And, and the lady is like, What? Oh, he was a copper. He was a copper. <laughs> he was a bloody copper. 
That um, was crazy, though. Dude, when he got hit by that car, I love people getting hit by cars in movies. That shit it gets me bricked <laughs> up in the club. I'm like, this Any is movie, awesome. No matter what movie I see, when someone walks in the road, yeah. I think they're getting hit by a car. Dude, it could be a family comedy. Every time, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. yo, don't turn your back to the street. <laughs> yeah. Don't ever. Yeah. <laughs> Be the shit was kind of fucked though, cause he his had like that white hair, fucked. yeah, and he instantly the red blood like contrasted with his white hair. I was like, oh, it was kind of too real, man. Too real. That was too real. Not him hitting, yeah. getting hit by a car. Um, I think my favorite part is probably just the the last twenty minutes. The last twenty minutes is just a full on banger. You got fucking yeah. old crazy lady doing crazy shit. You got ghosties doing ghosty <laughs> shit. Like, yeah, the last twenty minutes yeah. are fantastic. You're right. Did I take it back? My favorite part was Diana Rick. <laughs> yeah, she's great. I mean, she's yeah. and it's so crazy how she goes from uh, kind of cold to a little bit like caring and like loving, and then she just goes full fucking psychotic. And you're like, this yeah. bitch has layers. I mean, it's super dope because you're like literally like, okay, she's just an angry old lady. And then she's like, oh, she feels for her. She understands her. And it's just like, no, I'm just fucking doing a trap because I'm a fucking. I'm a killer. Her. <laughs> a bitch. <laughs> um, I mean, she killed so many just... men, though. She got so good at it. Oh, yeah. She was a seasoned many professional. Men. <laughs> many, 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 many men. Uh, James... I mean, and this was her last role, dude. So R.I.P. I mean, she right. went out with a bang for sure. James, what was your least favorite part of last night in Soho? Uh, anything with the the roommate. Like, it just was like, it was unnecessary. And even the stuff with the grandmother, I'm just like, you know what? That's like 25 minutes we probably could have, you know, done other shit with. Allocated to better characters. Yeah, I would rather have more stuff with the guy that liked her. Or maybe fleshing out like the, I don't know, something else. Yeah, he wouldn't mind fleshing her out too, homie. He tried every time, dude. <laughs> he did. He, he, was he, trying, dude, he said it. Dude. He was he shooting was a to give shot. Him the most. Yeah, he was shooting. But every other like girl his age was being a bitch. So like, of course, she's nice. He's like, oh shit, I'm not used to this. Yeah, and this I'm from weird. South London. So yeah, these people hate me. Yeah, I love that. You have a car. Well, how the fuck do you think I get here every day? <laughs> yeah, so I love when he's like, oh, where are you from? He's just like, um, South London. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, Eric, what was your least favorite part? I think we could have dealt, like, less, like, just school petty, like, petty bullshit with the mean girls. Like, less of that. Because they were, like, making fun of her in school, like, while she was making her shit. Like, like just less of that. And I feel like that wouldn't fucking happen. Like, this is not, like, it's it's some, like, <gasps> pristine thing. It's not like they're in high school. No, yeah, some, pe- like some, some people some... in college act like that, though. Yeah, but, dicks. like, it was too high school, like, drama bullshit for me. Like, Maybe it's because they're in the fashion industry. I, I don't mean, know. yeah. Nah, I feel like there are people in college who definitely act like this. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just, I didn't fucking, I couldn't stand it though. Every time it was happening, I was like, "This is stupid." Yeah. Because um, not like the girl got her comeuppance. Like if she did, that'd been one thing. Yeah, like, she should have got killed by. Even, but even in the way. end, even in the end, she was kind of like, "Ooh." Good for you. Wow, you made six of these clothes. You made clothes that existed already. <laughs> yeah. Nice um, job, idiot. <laughs> uh, I think my favorite part was that this movie just didn't know what it wanted to be. It didn't pick a lane and stay in it. It tried to just dip yeah. its toes into too many different lanes. And I don't think it succeeded from it. Um, Cinema score questions. Would we rent it? No. no. Nah. Would you buy this movie physically? Nope. Nah. No. I mean, you already did. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. <laughs> yeah. Would you buy this movie digitally? No. 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 Good thing you got it with your copy. I did. <laughs> did I? And that's why we don't pre-order, kids. That is why we don't pre-order. You're right. Yeah. Because I don't even... I. I don't even have his better films. Like, I have one other film of his. Oh, no. And I watched yeah. this shit on HBO Max. Yeah, so did I. I didn't even watch the copy <laughs> oh, that I own. No. I watched it on oh, HBO Max. No. Come on, Joey. Um, I, it's what I deserve. I'm flogging myself so that I get better. You should have watched it when we came out. That's your fault. That is my fault, 100%. <laughs> I, I admitted it. I should have watched it the first time it was on fucking HBO Max for free. That's when I should have seen it. That's true, too, yeah. Um, I just wanted to see it in theaters, and I couldn't get there. Uh, Would you buy it in the $5 bin at your local brick and mortar or virtual retailing establishment? No. 
It's nah. not rewatchable enough to even throw five at it. You know, five is a gift for Joey one day. If, yeah, if I didn't own it already, I would have bought it for five bucks just to have a just to complete the collection. I'd buy it for somebody else. You're right, Eric. That's a good one. Uh, would you put this on in the background while people are over? Sure. Yeah, if somebody, if, if you're yeah, hanging out with people and someone's like, oh, last night in Soho, I've never seen it. Is it any good? Yeah, it's fine. Do you want to watch it? Sure, throw it on. We're not paying attention to it. I think you the 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 twist would like obviously not work, but like outside of that, the first half of the movie, but it, it doesn't matter anyways. I mean, no, I think the twist will you, still work. It, the, not with the cop. Because you're missing the cop part. You there's no way. Yes. Yeah. I think no. I think there's a high enough chance that you'd be able to see all the scenes with the old lady to be like that. That old lady's nice, giving her a place to live. Kind of a bitch for how much she put up forward, but you know, <laughs> at least she's helping her out. And then to just come to the end of the movie randomly, where she's stabbing motherfuckers, you'd be like, "What the fuck is happening?" Yeah. Oh, uh, that might make the movie better. <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah. When you were pitching it, I was kind of in <laughs> on it. Um. Uh, and would we recommend it? Sure. I mean, I still would. Like, I still think it's good. Yeah, I still would, too. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, if you're just hanging out, you know, you're Netflix and chilling, you're HBO and maxing, like, sure. You're maxing and smashing, <laughs> like, sure. Because the movie is crazy enough, maybe if if the person you're with isn't as into horror movies and they're scared by this movie, you know, maybe they'll cuddle up and they'll flick your bean. Cool. No, dude, the nice. stylisticness of it, like that 60s vibe and the music, the sex appeal, dude, it'll get your fucking jibbies going. Dude, when Matt Smith and Anya Taylor Joy were dancing, I was like, oh, okay. When they were doing yeah. the twist, this and movie shit, has sex appeal, dude. It, it does, but only in the 60s. Because yeah, it yeah, loses yeah. all sex 100%. appeal when old girl is going fucking nuts in the real That's world. That's why I said it. It's not what it used to be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, our ratings. Who's got a good one? Mine's going to be dog shit. I ain't got a good one. Oh no, we're falling apart. Lisa. Uh, seven out of ten. That's the most I could do for you. <laughs> that's a good one. I'll give it a seven and a half out of ten. Um, scissors half, to the bro? eye. Oh my god. Yeah, not to the eye. So it connected. I'm looking at what we have in the sevens right now. Because I was thinking seven at first. Oh, I think this movie's a seven. <laughs> uh, so sevens have like Snowpiercer, 500 Days of Summer, Annihilation, Tenet, uh, Multiverse of Madness up at the top. And then the bottom sevens are almost famous. Uh, Veronica. Why is in there, dude? <laughs> dude, I, it's, I don't know. Um, it's not that good. <laughs> no, I rewatched half of it. Half of that yeah. movie is a nine at best. <laughs> nine at worst, I should say. Yeah. Man, John David Washington is hard in that movie. My, yeah, man, yeah. my man is the whole movie and is great. He's, I'm the protagonist. Yeah. What? Who he names is. himself that? <laughs> um, Step Brothers, Malignant, uh, Remember the Titans, Batman Returns, and Shazam is the bottom of the sevens. Dude, Malignant was such wow. a wild ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, if this movie was more like Malignant, it would get an eight for me. I'd be like, yeah. oh, Edgar Wright is off his fucking rocker. <laughs> I think this movie. I don't think this movie's an eight. I think it's a solid seven. No, seven that's and a half. I'm saying. I, could, I could roll with. I'm saying if it was more like a malignant, this movie yeah. would totally be an eight. If it had this, if it had Edgar Wright style with James Wan's craziness, oh, that's an eight uh, in my yeah. book any day, bro. But like, it, this is a seven. It, it, For, it, I'm even. I'm tempted to give it a six and a half. To be honest with you, what if the mom was the the killer bro at first i thought the mom I thought was so too yeah i did yeah this one could have been so yeah. much better um you know what no oh, i up, think I, you know what no i think this is a six and a half fuck it i'm going there i think Damn. right now on this viewing it's a six and a half maybe on a review i may give it a higher score once i give it a it's better be shot and a half. no i would have gave it low i would have gave it more i would have <laughs> given it eight on the first watch <laughs> damn um oh shit i didn't upgrade i didn't update the things uh, I'm updating the ratings now. Uh, Are you excited for his next venture, next Edgar Wright movie? Then <laughs> you know what? Everybody makes missteps. You know, not every album is a good album. You know, so yeah, I'm I'm st I'm gonna go into the next one as confident that I'm You're gonna right, love dude. it as I did with this one. You know what I mean? Mr. Morale, Big Steppers, he fell off. It happens. Okay. It's funny though when we look at our list though because it's like some of these movies and it's like obviously because it's just the averages where I'm like. 
man, like this movie is clearly like better than all these sevens. And there's other ones where it's like, damn, this movie's this dog shit. How no to the right. seven? Yeah, yeah, yeah no right. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like it, like we said in uh, in 94 episodes, we're gonna go through. We're gonna remove the outliers, and then we'll have just the three of ours, and we'll we'll have two different lists. And you know yeah. we'll can we'll have a list with the averages and a list with the with the always hears that deserve to with have the a yeah. Books. The people that actually watched the whole movie yeah, and talked the about them and gave their score. Yeah. Not, oh yeah, I saw it like three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because there are some in there where it's like, why well, did they do that? Well, some are skewed too much too because it's like two people or like even three versus four yeah. people skews it crazy. Well, yeah, that one other person can drop or like Moneyball was eight. Nine, nine, four and a half. Yeah. Doesn't deserve it. That should have been in the nines, but fucking Eric was whack as fuck on that one too. Mm. Um, but yeah, we're yeah. we're gonna have to go back and fix it. Maybe we need to re review Moneyball so that Eric can fix his score. I damn sure was. Well, I gave it a, right. a four I gave it a four and a half. No, you gave it an eight. <laughs> Galax gave it a four and a half. <laughs> okay, I think it's Galax's score that's Messing it up, come on. Uh, but it's an it's a nine ten movie, and for some reason it's yeah. in the sevens or wherever the fuck it's at. But if you would have gave it to a nine, we could have at least had it in the eights. Oh, Where? it's in the it's in the eight, but it's a middle of the pack oh. eight. It's oh. below the Conjuring two, the Big Sick, and uh, Sandlot. And, it's uh, better than Sandlot and Conjuring two. The Big Sick, I think, is fantastic. It's better than the Big Sick. Why is the Big Sick so low? I don't know. I don't think everybody gave it a ten. Uh. Man, um, man, no one likes your boy like you do, man. Yeah, clearly. Um, so this week we're watching Pray for sure, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then what was the other one we were talking about watching? Shit, there's like three movies that come out this week. What are they? I'm looking up the uh, ratings for Big Six. So, um, we might have to do a an extra episode. Um, the week after, soon. right? Yeah. We can talk about it after, but I mean, we can talk hay, about that it movie. Now. Your trip I watched is the movie. Okay. The twentieth to the twenty-first on um, right. be up. So let's do the. So we'll do the double episode in two weeks on the fourteenth. But there's a but there's a lot of shit coming up. So that's that's good though. There's we a lot had, of movies coming uh, up. Bodies, bodies, bodies. Uh, that's gonna have a and, and bodies, bullet train. Bodies, bodies, bodies isn't gonna have a wide release though, so it's gonna be harder for I think Eric and I to go see it. So bullet train and yes. prey. Yeah, Bullet Train was the other one that I was thinking of. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. You oh. gave you gave the Big Sick a nine and a half. Eric and I gave it an eight, so that's why okay. that's there. Um, but if Galax would have given it a four and a half, it'd have been below Moneyball. <laughs> it'd been fucked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so then we're seeing we're for sure reviewing Prey, right? Yeah. And then Bullet Train, I think, is a potentially that's for a tw- us. It's the twelfth. No, Bullet Train and Prey it's come out fifth. this oh, this shit. Friday. Oh yeah. For, yeah. Okay. Also, there's uh, which I don't think we're gonna watch is uh, Easter Sunday with uh, Joe Coy. Huh? Who? Uh, he's like a Again? comedian. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm good, man. Okay. With You're a name right. like that, I'm good. I said I didn't think we were. I was just was throwing it out there. You were right. You nailed it. We are not watching that. But there's a movie called Not Okay <laughs> on Hulu that gives me um, that movie uh, that I can't think of it right now. Oh, Don't Look Up Vibes. Uh, yeah, but then then you're watching a don't we're look just, up. We're saw the best. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I don't think this movie is better, but I think it's on Hulu. And if people want to watch it, it's a decent watch. That's three movies in a week. Oh, this looks like it. It gives off. It, it's trying real hard to be like a don't look up. It is hundred percent. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'll see. We'll see what we watch. I mean, I already watch. watched it. <laughs> oh my god, that's why you oh, brought it up. Yeah. Um, that might be right the for one. sure though. That might be the one that we do for a double up, and then we just fucking post it later, I guess. Um, we'll definitely see. Pray for sure, though, because that's getting fantastic reviews. Do we know Ooh, what... is it? I haven't looked. Oh, yeah. People are loving Pray right now. Ooh. Bullet I was going to watch it anyway. No reviews. I'm excited for Bullet Train, even though like we know the whole movie. <laughs> dude, it's it gonna be a so fun mad. action movie. Like, yeah, but you know, come on. It I'm just excited any... for my boy, dude. It if been it's not better than fun. Gray Man, though, I'm gonna be pissed. It's gonna like, be it better has than to at Gray least Man. be Come better on. than Gray Man. Yeah. Um uh oh, nobody you know, never mind. Praise stuff is gonna make yet, a, but... it's gonna make a ton of money, dude. It got bad bunny in it though. Yeah, a hell of people You're are right? gonna go just for bad money. 
Yeah. You just. Latinos are going to show up crazy. They, they will. They'll be like, wow, we really hit the Latino market on this one. I missed them in concert, so I got to go see Bullet Train. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's going to have a big part. <laughs> um, all right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in on twitch.tv slash sooner or later TV, our YouTube channel, or my personal Facebook for our review of Last Night in Soho. Continue listening and watching and showing your support on all social media at sooner or later TV. If you couldn't catch us live on those three platforms, don't worry. We will upload all of our podcasts to every podcasting platform, including YouTube, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, Anchor, uh, some weird one that you've never heard of, but I'm sure some fucking rando on Reddit uses. We got them all. We're all there. We're there automated (laughs) every Wednesday afternoon. Um, So tune in next week for our review of Prey and potentially Bullet Train. We love you. Bye-bye. Bye. See you.